right. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you guys for joining us for this webinar Wednesday. My name is Jamie, and I'm with the Statewide Internet Portal Authority. Today we're going to explore a safe, secure, and anonymous whistleblower and office communication solution called Wisply. Sylvain, the CEO and co-founder of Wisply, will be leading the webinar today and walking us through a demo of the solution. Just note that during this webinar, you are muted. If you have questions or would like to communicate with myself or Sylvain at any point during the webinar, please use the chat box in the lower left-hand corner of your screen. We have left time at the end of the webinar for Sylvain to answer any questions you might have. Again, feel free to leave questions in the comment box in the lower left-hand corner during the presentation. Just a note, we are recording this session, um, so if you're looking to share it or put it on your social media or give it to coworkers after the session today, look for that email in your inbox with that YouTube link. And with that, I think we're ready to get started, so I'll turn it over to you, Sylvain. Thanks, Amy. Hi, everyone. Thank you for making the time. Um, so today I'm just going to give you a bit of an overview of, of Wispy and, and what we've been doing for the past, uh, for the past three years. Um, it will all start with uh, um, a small, a short uh, poll with one, one quick question, uh, and then I'll give you a bit of background on actually uh, what happened to myself because I happen to be a, a whistleblower. Um, and, uh, and then I'll go uh, and give you a bit of a tour of the, the Wispy platform and ca how you can apply actually in your context um, in your organization, whether it is a company or a, a local government, uh, it could even be a, a school. Um, so uh, not to the ado, here's the, um, the, uh, the slide about the poll. So this is all about, um, so feel free to, um, uh, to, uh, uh, to answer that question. Uh, of course, you don't have to, but it's just to understand if you actually have been in a situation where you could have you know, used a system like, uh, like Wispy um, as, a, as a whistleblower. So I'll, I'll give you a few seconds so you can actually answer that, uh, that question yourself. So it appears that uh, about two thirds of um, of you on the line um, have been um, you know exposed to to such situation, which is interesting, um, and uh, and I think it's uh, you know hopefully the uh, the presentation will uh, will help you understand what uh, what tools are out there and how you can actually uh, um, you know uh, use such system or other systems to actually come forward and be able to to speak up without uh, without fear. So let me now share. Um, my desktop with you so you can actually see uh, my uh, presentation. Here we go. So I'll, I'll, I'll skip through some, some slides and I've used CPA as, uh, as an example here to show you how the platform actually works. Um, the, uh, the, uh, the, the platform, the Wispy platform, enables any um, employee or stakeholders or student in the case of a, of a school or college or university to be able to speak up safely. Um, as I mentioned uh, in my short introduction, um, I am myself a whistleblower. You might hear a bit of an accent. The reason is I'm French and Australian. I've been living in Australia for 13 years, uh, coming from France originally. Uh, and, um, and six years ago, I actually uncovered a $21 million fraud. Uh, I was new in uh, an organization um, in, uh, in con that was working in construction, mining, engineering, and, um, and I was uh, recruited by the head of procurement to actually help that um, individual to set up the procurement team. The, the organization was spending just over $20 billion a year, and, and we had to understand where that money was actually um, going and how we could optimize um, that spend. Um, two months into my role, I uncovered some uh, uh, interesting invoices, um, and within a few minutes, I actually um, discovered that one of our employees was behind them, and that fraud scheme was um, going on for the past 12 years. Um, in my mind, then, um, I thought, you know, that's not possible. I've been here two months. I'm still on probation. My wife is expecting baby number three, and, um, and obviously I must be missing a few pieces of that puzzle. So um, I need to find, um, you know, a reasonable excuse to, um, to make sure this is actually uh, legitimate and not fraud. Um, it took me about four hours to, you know, um, look at all that information and come to the conclusion that even though at least 50 to 100 people saw exactly what I saw, um, this seems to be fraud. So why would I be the one, you know, reporting it? Um, I, I put my job on the on the fence and 
and uh, and this is quite an uncomfortable situation. Uh, and then I went onto the um, the internet of the company. It took me 30 minutes to find out the code of conduct and the whistleblower policy. And the company was doing everything by the book. Uh, they had um, access to a, a so-called independent third party with different reporting channels, such as a, a hotline, a web form, a PO box, a fax, uh, and an email address. Um, but I, I didn't feel comfortable in using all of those mechanisms myself. And I'm not saying that they're not suitable for, for some people, but in my case, they were simply not for two main reasons. One is they're either not anonymous or not enabling a two-way communication. Um, so I actually did something that I would recommend everybody else not to do, which is to talk to my manager. And uh, the reason why I did that was because she was new as well. She had been there five months. She's the one that recruited me, and she couldn't be part of that fraud scheme that was going on for 12 years. Um, immediately, she went to the CFO and the CEO of the organization. The next day, the guy was interviewed, and he caught 12 years behind bars. He actually served only five um, and a bit. He came out of uh, prison last year. In the meantime, the organization asked me if I wanted to become a risk manager, um, part of the uh, um, internal audit team, which I did for about two, uh, two and a half years. And uh, only to realize that um, out of the 50 plus investigations that I've managed for that organization, um, any time I was able to reach out to a potential whistleblower, I got the same response, which is I fear for myself, my job, and my family, I will not speak up. And I came up to the conclusion that our best asset in any organization are our people. And, we sh and they, know, you know, they know their job really well. And we should leverage our people because we pay them every day or they're around you know, the organization every day. Um, we should enable them to, to speak up freely. Uh, but for them to do so, we need to take away the fear, the fear of not knowing what's going to happen when I make my first report the fear of not knowing if the company or the organization or the school is going to be supportive um, and not having you know, the options in front of me uh, without having to disclose my identity. So that's really how WISPLI um, you know, was born three years ago, being a secured, anonymous to a communication platform. It has grown up into much more than that now because we also have a case management solution available to, uh, to our clients. Uh, but this is really the basics of WISPLI, is enabling all of your key assets in your organization, whether they are your employees, your students in the case of a school, whether they're your suppliers or your customers, um, whether you want to allow to access your, um, your um, reporting form to let you know, to give you more visibility and transparency across your organization so you don't put your organization in danger. Think about WISPLI as being the um, smoke alarm of the fraud. It's there to tell you, it's an early warning system, it's there to tell you that hey, there might be an issue here and there. Yes, there could be a false positive, like with a smoke alarm, you just reset it and start again and wait for something um, you know, that's, that has substance in it to actually do your investigation and hopefully protect your organization and your people. Um, I'll show you a couple of slides on how WISP actually works. So again, keeping the CIPA example where um, CIPA, you know, um, uh, could subscribe to, actually has subscribed to, to Wispley, but in that case, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll pretend that, you know, CIPA could subscribe to Wispley, um, uh, put Wispley available to, uh, to its staff uh, member, and then staff would start communicating with, um, with, with CIPA. Um, at that point, um, CIPA might say, listen, we maybe don't have the skills to investigate, investigate that you know, bullying matter or that fraud matter or that safety concern. Let's bring someone external to the organization to actually help us out. So Wispley works with um, uh, a lot of partners, um, you know, the big four, for instance, in several uh, countries around the world. Uh, there's actually one that I mentioned here called ProdLight, which is actually um, located in, in, uh, in Boulder, in, in Colorado, so not too far from, uh, from where you are, obviously. Um, and then, you know, you could invite um, uh, an external party. It might be, you know, your, your lawyer. It could be an investigator from down the road. But you'd invite that party to investigate um, that single report that came in that you, you can't, you know, handle yourself. Um, and, uh, and when the investigation is finished, you will just cut the cord and they'll move away from you. The second scenario is you might actually um, um, outsource um, the, uh, the, uh, the management of the Wispy platform to a third party, and you might go to, you know, a fraud light or a KPMG or whoever you want to say, listen, look after my Wispy accounts, do the interaction with uh, my um, informants or whistleblowers, and then you know, using the platform, uh, come back to me and give me, um, give me a, a short uh, 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 summary of what's happening, and I'll give you some, some instructions. Um, there could also be a third model where you may well decide to say, okay, if someone reports about bullying or harassment or sexual harassment, um, I want those reports to go to my 
um, um, human resources departments within my organization. However, if a report comes in and talks about collusion, corruption, cartel, safety, please, you know, route um, that uh, or triage that report automatically to uh, the external third party. So you could have a, a mix of, uh, of the two scenarios. The way WISPLI works is for an informant to have access to um, a reporting form, and that reporting form comes in uh, the form of a QR code, which you can see here on the bottom left corner of your screen. Um, so if you've got, um, um, let's say, um, an iPhone or an Android, uh, you can actually scan that QR code, or even a tablet, you can scan that QR code um, to get access to the form from your, um, uh, from your smartphone or tablet. Um, and you could have access to that um, form through a UI link. Uh, in this case, I've embedded the UI link into uh, the CIPA logo, um, which means when I click on that uh, CIPA logo, the form would pop up on my screen, whether it's a desktop, laptop, or, um, or smartphone, anywhere around the world. So Weasley, it's really important to remember that it's accessible from anywhere using any device connected to the Internet. There's no need to download any um, app whatsoever on any uh, device. Um, you just have to either scan a QR code or click on a, a URL link or a button that has that URL link embedded. And then the, the form will pop up. So I'm going to click on that um, CIPA logo here. And hopefully the form will pop up on your screen as well. Um, the look and feel of that form can be whatever you'd like. So I've just recycled uh, pretty much the colors of um, the CIPA uh, website. Um, it's important that the form looks and feel like the organization, so the uh, informant is actually uh, comfortable in using, um, in using the, uh, the system, uh, but again, it could look very different to what you see on your screen here. Uh, again, this is just a, a sample form. You can see that from the URL. It's called the CPA test form. Uh, this is not um, a live uh, form. It's, uh, it just sits on my test environment. But here I've got the CPA logo. I've got questions that can be entirely um, um, configured or customized to suit your organization. So, of course, a form for a school would look very different um, from um, a form that you would use for any other local government or any other organization. On the right-hand side of that form, you can have um, a message that you can configure um, that the informant will actually um, read, and it could be anything around your code of conduct, what's going to happen when the report has been submitted, who's going to interact with the informant, how is the anonymous two-way communication working, um, and so on and so forth. So you can put um, quite a large text here. There's actually no limit on the number of characters. So if I just scroll down quickly onto that form, I've got a bunch of mandatory fields. And then I've got um, you know, some categories of reporting, which of course can be um, customized. Um, and, um, and here I've got a section around contact details, which is optional, so most people will not actually fill in that, that section. Um, wh what they would have to do then is to actually create an anonymous login. So they would have to create their own password. Once they've created the password, they'll be able to submit the form, attach whatever evidence they may have to submit with their report, and then the system will give them a report ID number. Okay, so this is how the system works. Then when they want to log back in, they can simply go back to the form, click on login to follow up, enter their um, report ID and, and password that they've created, and they could do that again from any device from anywhere around the world to follow up on the investigation. They would then be able to enter into a live conversation with a case manager. That case manager might be, again, within your organization, or it could be outsourced to um, one of our managed service partners. Now I'm going to show you the other side of the platform, which is actually what a case manager would see. So I'm going to go on to um, a test environment. Uh, so I'm uh, logged on to Wispy, as a, which is a, one of our test environments. And here I can see my dashboard. That dashboard is entirely configurable as well. So I can, um, I can change any of those graphs to look at whatever analytics I'm interested in looking at. Um, and, um, and then from that dashboard, my case manager will, of course, have um, access to their form. So here I've got my CPA um, sample reporting form, which I created using one of our templates. We've got templates for uh, all types of industries. And of course, any of those templates can be configured to uh, make sure that all the questions are relevant to, your, um, to what you want to achieve with the form. So when I open the, uh, uh, the, uh, the CIPA reporting form, um, I've got access to my URL link. I've got access to the QR code, which is here. So I can grab that QR code and put that image into my um, internet site, for instance. Um, let me, uh, there we go. I can, uh, uh, I can then uh, go and edit the form. So here I could change any of those fields. So if I don't like report name, and I want to change that to, I don't know, report description. I can simply do that here. Um, if I can, if I want to add um, a question, for instance, about, you know, um, the location, 
um, and here it could be um, a drop down list with one, ch with one choice and I might enter my option and one could be Denver, uh, Boulder and then other and make it mandatory or not for the informant to answer. That question now appears in yellow so I know where it is in my form and I can move it around really quickly to make sure it fits wherever I want on my reporting form. Now if I was to refresh um, our reporting form here, I can now see the location field is, um, appears here with my options that I just created. So it's really quick and fast to actually uh, make changes to the form without impacting the URL or the QR code whatsoever. So if things change in your organization, you can change the form on the fly. Now if I want to remove that field, I just have to you know, delete it and then it's gone. Um, there's um, a couple of translation that I've put in our reporting form. So um, in the US, of course, you've got a lot of people that do speak English and a lot of people that speak Spanish. They could also speak um, Chinese and I'm sure, I'm sure a couple of them do speak French. But here I've just put um, English and Spanish to show you an example. How the form would translate you know, immediately so someone can uh, you know, um, use the, the, the form in any language of their choice. So again, there's no restriction on what language or dialect you can build into the form. So if you believe that some of your um, you know, stakeholders or people using the form may need to have access to other languages, this can definitely be um, added very quickly within the, within the, the reporting form by simply uh, picking a language, adding language, and then doing the translation on the go about every custom field that you've got in your form with the right language, and then that will apply into the reporting form. Um, I was talking about the automation capability where you can automate the triage of reports depending you know, on the uh, category of reporting made. So if something comes around, you know, bullying and sexual harassment, you can uh, triage those reports to the, to the appropriate team. And then if it talks about fraud and corruption uh, to another team, if it talks about safety, it might go to you know, the building manager for them to fix the problem really quick. Um, so you can build some automation here really quickly by saying, you know, uh, let's call that one um, fraud. Um, uh, triage, and then uh, we say every time a report is submitted to that form, to that form, that's when we want to apply the um, uh, the automation. We're going to define the condition, and the condition could be, you know, the answer to the question category is any of, and then pick um, theft, and then fraudulent financial statements, and potentially corrupt or prohibited practices, um, and that's our condition. And we could add several conditions. And then I can say, okay, um, add uh, or delegate the report to Sylvain, which is me, and add other case managers. Um, so I've got Joe Blog and Bart Smith, really handy to use when you do demos. And I'm going to give them access to you know, read and write. Um, and, uh, and so that's my team. Every time a report comes in and it talks about um, anything related to you know, fraud, then the report would be delegated to Sylvain and Joe and Bart would be added, added to, the, um, to the investigation team. And I can keep on building other automation if I want to. So now we've got a reporting form. Um, it can actually be, um, um, I can generate posters re real quick. Uh, and I've got a couple of them that I uh, uh, opened up uh, before the call. Uh, so here I've got two posters, one in English, one in, in Spanish. And, and people get access to those posters you know, alongside the wall of your organization click on the URL link, get access to the form, and then I'll pretend that I'm a whistleblower and uh, I, can, uh, I can start you know, filling in the, the form. I'll just copy some text here to go and quickly fill in the, the report. Um, I'm going to put uh, for financial debt statement. The value will be between 10 and 100K. Um, and then QWERTY um, LLC. <coughs> I don't have to fill in all those fields, but I'll just put some data in there. Uh, there we go. I don't want to give my details, so I'm just going to enter password. Test one, test dash test one. Good. Password match. Tick the capture box. Just around security. So WISCLE is as secure as your online banking. We're um, uh, ISO certified 27001 for information security. We store the data in the cloud using Amazon Web Services and you can use um, the, the a server of your uh, choosing. So all our US-based customers will use servers in the US, which makes sense. But of course, um, European customers would prefer a server in Germany or France or something like this. And our customers in, in Australia, of course, would pick Sydney as a, as a location. Um, I'm now submitting my, uh, my report, um, which will allow me then to um, attach um, evidence. So here I can attach any file of up to 25 megabytes each, and I can attach up to 10 files. 
when I log back in, I can then attach more files if I want to. Um, so here I can go and um, select um, maybe a couple of uh, slides. I'll just put a few logos and see um, if we can upload them. There we go. Now the system is doing an antivirus check um, and removing all the metadata, um, and I'm good to go. I'm being provided with a report ID number, which as an informant I need to remember. I'm also provided, uh, being provided with a UI link to log back in and a button to follow up. So I could either you know, click on that UI link or, or, or that button, take me to the uh, follow up page where I can enter my report ID and, and password to log back in. But let's pretend that the informant is actually you know, going home and will connect the next day um, after they flew from you know, Denver to, uh, to Los Angeles, for instance. So as an informant, I've done my job and I can go home. On your uh, on CPI's side, um, the case managers um, through the automation will receive an email notification saying, "Hey, a new report came in. Go and log on to Wisply. They log on to Wisply. I've got a new report that has been received, um, and now I'm going to go and have a look at that report. Here, I can see the content of the report uh, that was submitted by the informant. There's of course no contact details because we didn't enter those in the reporting form, but that's okay." I can go and look at you know, my, a couple of evidence that have been submitted to the, the reporting form. And, um, and at that stage, I might also you know, want to add um, a couple of, uh, of my um, investigators to, uh, to help me with, um, with the investigation. So I can add them to the team, give them some level of access. So Joe Blog is an expert. I'll give him access to everything. But Dart Smith may be um, um, uh, an intern. So he'll see everything, but not the uploads for whatever reason. And I'll invite them to the team. Now, there's three of us that you know, can interact with um, the, uh, the informant. There's Sylvain and Joe and Bart. And here we can say, hey, thanks for your report. Could you please send us another file? Submit that to my informant. Um, and also ABC. And then let's assume that the third message that you're sending is full of typo or is actually not what you wanted to send. Because we keep the audit trail of everything within Wistly, you can't delete um, a message. However, you can retract the message. When you do that, it will just appear in red on your screen, uh, but won't appear on the screen of the informant. So now I've got a couple of messages um, that will appear on the screen of the informant. The third one will not appear. Um, so here, if I go back to my uh, informant screen, um, there we go. I'm going to log into Flup. Put my report ID number, my password, and then um, access the uh, the report follow-up page. So here on that page, for instance, I've got my um, two uh, messages that I've got from the um, case manager. The third one, of course, was retracted. Um, I also know that a case manager is online, which is really handy because then I can uh, respond something and say, um, "Thank you. Please find um, other file." Attach, send that, and I've got my um, two-way communication um, that will that will go. So just so the um, uh, the uh, the uh, the case manager at the other end uh, will actually um, you know be able to to see that um, that message um, and uh, and and access the uh, the information. So the the, the whole idea of uh, of Wisply being that you um, you can interact with uh, with case managers using the platform, having a two-way communication and then be able to manage your case. So I won't go through um, too much detail here. I'm just going to jump back onto um, the PowerPoint presentation and show you um, a, a few screenshots. So this is what I did before, scan my QR code, get access onto uh, you know, any device to the reporting form, making my report. Then the case manager from CIPA would connect to the platform, interact with the informant. So I've got my two-way communication going between the case manager and the informant, all of that being, of course, um, anonymous. Uh, on the side of um, CIPA, the case can be managed, um, invite your uh, colleagues, interact with your colleagues from the platform. Of course, if you've outsourced the platform, you would interact with the, the third party that you've invited to, to manage your, your case or your report. Um, then you could have workflows. Workflows are actually investigation process. You can configure your own investigation process within Wispy. You may have one for uh, bullying, another one for you know, um, sexual harassment, and then a third one for anything related to fraud, for instance. Um, a workflow is just a series of steps and questions, and th those steps and questions can trigger automations, which could be you know, notify um, the, uh, the head of that department that you know, we've got a, a fraud case 
of uh, you know, more than $10,000, for instance. And that um, head of department would then receive an email uh, with the information they can log on to Weasley and put some comments also into that, uh, into that investigation process. And the, uh, the automation that we've, we've, we've looked at, because we've built one, um, allows you to automate uh, most of the work so you don't have to you know, do it yourself. Um, and, uh, and the system will take care of that triage of, of reports depending on some criteria that you may have set. And the last point is around reporting and analytics. Think about Wispy, you know, as a big part of Lego Bricks, where you can actually configure everything yourself. You configure your reporting form to suit your organization. You, you can, and actually, you can configure several reporting forms. There could be one for your employees, one for your suppliers, one to do surveys with employees, for instance. You can build multiple um, uh, reporting forms as you as you see fit. Every time you create a reporting form, you you, you create your own URL. It generates the QR code automatically, and you can use um, that, you know, um, uh, for for any type of, of requirements. So in local governments, um, you know, usually the use cases are around um, um, internal, um, you know, people being able to speak up, so your staff. But it would be also every time you go out to tender to buy something, uh, and you may go out and, and, and you know consult five you know suppliers, you would send them a UI link and QR code of we see of a reporting form that has been configured for um, you know a procurement tender, and say, listen, we're going out to tender to purchase you know X Y Z. If any of our suppliers wants to communicate with our organization um, anonymously, feel free to scan that QR code or click on that URL, and we can in turn do an anonymous two-way um, communication. This is just to stop you know, wrongdoing in the procurement process where you could have collusion, cartel, um, something happening between um, a procurement officer and a supplier, um, and this is just to make sure that you know, everybody is um, um, doing its job by the book. So reporting is the same thing. You can build and configure your own reporting. If you want to see you know, the number of reports per category of reporting in the last month or 12 months, you can build that. If you want to see what your case, manager, case managers are working on, you can do that as well. Um, and then you can decide to actually put those reporting onto your dashboard. So every time you connect, you can see the latest um, uh, information uh, being updated live in front of your, of, of your eyes. Um, I wanted to show you a couple of uh, you know um, um, applications of WISP. So this is the uh, um, the um, um, uh, office of the Attorney General um, for Colorado. Where on the left hand side, this is actually a, a screenshot of the website where you can report on different things. And depending what you want to report on, you have to click on the right button, and then it will open up a form. What I've done on the right hand side was just actually to create um, a WISP reporting form, embed that into a logo, and and put the QR code. If I click on the uh, the logo it takes me to a reporting form that looks like um, you know the, uh, uh, the the office of the attorney general. Here um, I've actually put all of the different categories of reporting that we actually saw here on the left hand side. So instead of having a button per category, it's now built into the reporting form, and then you know um, staff can decide to actually report on several things. So they can you know select uh, make different selections and report on on different matters. Um, and again, the form you know is no uh, no different to the one I've I've done for CPA, ex except from the uh, the colors, the look and feel, the text on the right hand side, of course, uh, which is um, configured just for the uh, office of the Attorney General. And again, you know you could have some automation in the back end to make sure that depending on what has been selected here, um, the reports take the right path and and is being triaged appropriately. So that's one use case uh, just to show you how it can appear um, on a website, uh, get access to the QR code and, and, and URL link. Another example is about you know, um, the use of Wispley in the case of a missing person or person of interest. So this is just one screenshot of a, an Australian website uh, that is all about missing persons. And that little boy actually went missing. Um, and the only option you had at the time was actually to go on that website, um, which nobody really does, and look for that uh, individual, and then um, call um, a, what we call a crime stopper hotline, where you would speak with um, an operator in a call center which is uh, quite difficult to do for anyone that wants to make a report. But what about we actually, um, on the same website, have a QR code um, and, and potentially a link behind that photo, or we actually put information on social media so the entire planet could be aware of, you know, we've got that missing person in, uh, in Sydney, Australia. If you've seen um, that little boy, please, please click on the photo on your Facebook page. And when you do so, it takes you to a reporting form that is configured by, you know, for instance, here, again, it's an example, but the Australian Federal Police, um, and you can make a report, and that report will go straight to the investigators that are looking for that boy. So if he was missing in Sydney, but he happens to be now in, in Melbourne or Brisbane or even in Denver, and you think you've seen that boy, you can actually make a report, 
send a couple of photos of that child that you believe is, is the one that they're looking for, that message goes straight to the investigators that can then interact with you and, uh, and, and uh, make sure you know, that they can, uh, they can either confirm that this is the little child that they're looking for or maybe not, in which case they'll just move on and, and thank you for your help. But you as an informant, you don't have to disclose your identity to the, uh, the law enforcement authorities. So you're happy to help, you're happy to support, but you just don't want to be um, you know, necessarily um, seen or known, um, or at least until you know, they can confirm that, yes, this is the boy, you know, thank you for your help. Uh, and then you might want to you know, come forward and actually provide your details to, you know, um, um, uh, because you're a good citizen. Um, so that's you know, the, the, the two slides that I wanted to, to show you about you know, some potential uh, use cases. I've got one more, which is, um, again, um, a, a screenshot of a, an Australian website from the Australian Federal Police. Uh, here in Australia, we've got what they call the National Security Hotline. We've got something similar in the U.S. Um, there's something around Airport Watch where people you know, can see something in an airport and, and make a report. Um, again, you, know, you can create a, a reporting form linked to that so people can actually make a, a report real quick. So this is the one for the National Security Hotline. And this one is for Airport Watch. If you see a luggage, you might scan a car code on a, on a poster in the airport, fill in the form, send it through, um, and then... Um, and then you know interact with the uh, with the law enforcement to uh, to resolve the the matter. So these are you know just a, a sample um, uh, use cases of of Whiskey. So I'm actually done with the overview of uh, of the presentation. Um, I'm just gonna um, go and stop uh, uh, sharing so we can um, we can go back to uh, our last uh, slide. And here, Jamie, I might. Here we go. So, um, so Jamie, if you want to maybe um, take over for the Q and A, that'd be great. Thank you, everyone, yeah, for listening. Great. And I'm now. Um, thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Sylvain. Um, and again, Sylvain's going to stay with us for a few more minutes. Um, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to put your type your questions into the question. Box, the comment box on the lower left-hand side of your screen, um, and I'll kind of read them out as we get them. We're going to give about a minute or two to get those in, just in case anyone needs to process the information they got. Great information. Thank you so much. Um, we do have one question just to kind of start us off, um, and that's how do I include a third party for reporting as a case manager? Is that possible? Is it completely up to my organization or government? Could you speak a little bit to that? Sure. Thank you for, for that uh, really good question. Wispy is, is, um, you know, is, um, is a really flexible platform, and, and so you may well decide to you know, start using it internally um, initially, and then after a few weeks or a few months realize that you actually want to outsource you know, part, of, uh, part of the management. Of that, of that platform. You may well decide to go with one of our existing, what we call managed service partners, or you may say, no, no, actually I want my you know, um, uh, investigation firm or law firm to look after my account, in which case uh, we would make them um, what we call a managed service partner, which would then allow them to have access to your account um, and managing your account on your behalf. You may well decide to restrict their access to only view certain type of reports. Like I mentioned before, it could be, let's say, the fraud report um, and not the HR-related report, in which case the configuration of the portal will be made uh, so those individuals from, your, um, uh, from the partner side can only see those type of reports coming in. Or you may well decide that they will actually be on call, so you, you, know, you manage your own reports, and then one day you want to invite them um, or one person you know, external to your organization. You'll just add them as a user, grant them access to the report that you want to share with them, and then that's how they can you know, uh, appear onto the, onto the platform and help you. But they will see nothing else but what you want them to see. Um, so this is how it works. You're, there's a lot of flexibility around the WISP platform and how you use it. You're in control. You decide who can access uh, your portal and what they can access within within the Whiskey platform. I can Great. see a question right. uh, as well. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So our, our next question: Has SIPA purchased this program, and is it available to various state agencies now? Um, and I I could answer that if that's okay with you. Sure. All right. Um, so the answer is yes, SIPA has purchased this program, um, and we're in the process of perfecting it for our organization. Um, and the, the answer to the second half of your question is that we're currently in talks 
about a resale model for WISPLY. Um, and if you'd like more information or would like to um, express your excitement about the solution itself, uh, you could go ahead and email Beth Justice. Her email is in the blue box on the screen. Or please, at the end of this webinar, a survey will pop up um, and just input kind of your interest in there and what you might be looking at in terms of the WISPY solution. Uh, and then we'll have someone kind of get back to you either from WISPY or from SIPA. Um, but that's a great question. So kind of moving I'll into I'll just add something to it, uh, Jamie. Yeah, for sure. Just around the, um, the, the, the WISPY platform. So I, I mentioned that you know, uh, I originally come from France. I'm, I've been 13 years in, in Australia. Uh, I'm actually you know, relocating to, uh, to the U.S. Um, in, uh, in about three months' time. Uh, so I won't be uh, too far from um, from you in terms of time zone, locating on the on the east coast of the of the U.S. And this is due to the growth of the organization uh, globally, whether it's in, uh, in in Europe or the uh, or the U.S. Uh, we've got people on the ground, as I mentioned already, with with our partners, um, and and one uh, one of them being really close to you, um, to you, uh, being Ford Light, uh, located in in Boulder, Colorado. Um, so there's already you know people there that can help you. We've got clients there, um, and um, and and happy to support you know any any one of you if you'd like to know more, if you'd like a, a personalized uh, presentation or demo for your um, for your organization. Happy to do that. Um, you've got my um, contact details. You can uh, definitely make contact at hello at um, so that we can you know get in touch and help you uh, help you do that all right I think to finish up we have two more questions um, the next question is can everyone in the admin panel or can all of the case managers access all of the reports um, what if there is a conflict of interest in one of the reports about the case manager can you speak to this a little bit Yes, sure, and that's a really, really good question. Um, again, you can configure anything within the within the platform, including the user profiles. So some of your users will uh, will have uh, uh, more access than others because they can maybe configure reporting forms, configure automation, configure workflows, and and then configure analytics, of course. And others will be set up as a user, and when they log in, they'll see nothing, and they will see nothing until they either invited to join an investigation, in which case they'll receive an email and then log on to the platform and, and do their job. Um, or because they actually uh, in an automation, and that automation will automatically add them to a team, so they can they can come and support. So again, you define who can access what. Um, a good example, you know, would be uh, would be uh, CPA and the way they've configured the platform, where you can actually, if you believe there's a conflict of interest between a case manager within the organization within CPA, you can then have the option to triage uh, as a whistleblower. You've got the option to triage that report to a different person. So you make sure that the person that you know is, is doing the um, uh, wrongdoing um, uh, doesn't doesn't get access to to that report. So there are options when you configure the reporting form, when you set up the automation, to make sure that the people that are committing committing the crime don't get involved in um, in uh, in the investigation, of course. Awesome. And our very last question um, to kind of wrap this up is. Can this be an effective tool um, within a very small organization or government um, that might have 10 or 20, 25 folks in the office? And have you seen this work in the past? The answer is yes. And it's all about how you actually use the platform. So again, if you've got a really small team, you might want to outsource that to um, uh, an external party. So whenever a report is made, it doesn't go to the individual uh, in that organization because you may actually be only 5, 10, or 15. Uh, so highly likely the report that you're making is about you know, um, a potential case manager of Whistly. So then you would um, highly likely find someone else to manage that, um, that, uh, that account for you. Or you may well decide to still manage that internally because you believe that's the best way to handle it, um, and, uh, and in which case you would actually give the option to the informant to decide where the mis where that report should go, you know, do you want to send that to um, the, uh, the 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 head of department or the CEO or the the CFO or the the head of internal audit or whoever that person might be in that team? And you could then help um, and guide or give the opportunity to the informant to actually triage um, the uh, the report to the appropriate case manager. So these these are all of the options. But just to give you an example, we've got small businesses, you know, uh, or small agencies. Um, and if you take an example of a, you know, a restaurant with 20 staff, 
um, in that case, you know, it could uh, it could well be that only the uh, uh, the, uh, the the uh, the owners of the or the directors of that restaurant will will receive reports. But what they want is actually their people to talk about things like food hygiene or, or theft or um, or harassment or bullying. Um, so an employee would then make their report to you know the the boss of that restaurant, um, and they do it in an anonymous fashion. Of course, if the boss is the one uh, you know committing the crime. In the end, it would be the, his own business, so he can, um, you know, he, he can take that risk if he wish to do so. In a local government, it's very, a very different story, where you would actually want, you know, someone potentially external um, to add access to um, to that report and to be impartial um, uh, to make sure that if something goes wrong in in a local government, um, um, the, someone, you know, independent can be can be made aware of that and and, and tackle the situation. Great, thank you. This is great information, especially as someone from the SIPA team who's um, we've just adopted the program. So I'm I'm glad to kind of learn a little bit, a little bit more about it and dive into it in depth. Uh, it looks like we don't have any more questions coming in. Um, so I would encourage you, if you do kind of have any final questions after the fact, please reach out to Sylvain or to Beth. Um, again, their contacts are in the blue box um, on your screen. Also, we're going to have a survey for you after the webinar. We would so appreciate if you could give us your feedback, let us know what your thoughts are on the webinar about WISPLY, um, and maybe potential webinars you'd like to see SIPA come out with. Uh, so if you want to return to this webinar again to view it or share it with a colleague, please keep a lookout for the post-webinar email with the link to the video on SIPA's YouTube channel. We will have that for you. Um, and additionally, we really want to make these webinars as relevant and as informational as possible. So it would be great, again, if you could fill out that survey following the webinar. It looks like we're going to give you guys a couple minutes back, which is great. So to close, I want to thank you all for being with us this afternoon. I especially want to thank Sylvain for waking up early and taking the time to share what a great solution WISPLY is with us. So thank you so much, um, and I hope you guys all have a great rest of your day. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, everyone, for, for attending the webinar. And please be in touch if you'd like um, uh, any more information or, or a demo. Thanks, everyone.